Hi everyone, it's Robin with Boutage Jardin in Vancouver, Canada. I have another video tutorial for you today. We took a little brief hiatus over the summer while we focus on our wedding season, but it's September where we are here in Vancouver and things have started to die down. So I've got the time again to start making videos. And I had a whole bunch of leftover greens and flowers and I wanted to take the opportunity to focus today on a particular green that I really love and I highly, highly, highly recommend for DIY and that is Italian Rescus. So a little bit about the greenery itself. So the name again is Italian Rescus here where we are in Vancouver and that's the area that we serve. Um, you could get this year round and it's imported it's not grown by any local grower and the nice thing about Italian Rescus and this is what makes it I, one of the reasons I think it's easy to work with for DIY is the bunches are consistently 10 stems that we sell now if you're outside of Vancouver and you're sourcing from a, a, another source you're gonna want to ask them how many stems come in a bunch and most of them will tell you but um, but for what we sell and I think it's pretty standard for the industry 10 stems per bunch and what's really nice about that is unlike eucalyptus, uh, which can vary, um, it's consistent. So these are branched but tiny branches. So one stem will look consistently like this, which is very, very nice. Um, predictability is always good, whether you're a professional or you're doing DIY. So the reason I recommend it, so one, it's easy to uh, quantify. And the second reason um, is it's useful in pretty much every type of arrangement. So they're beautiful in bouquets. Um, especially if you're doing like a cascade at the bottom, it droops very naturally. Um, it's fantastic for boutonnieres and for that you just take off the little side shoots here and that's really handy for a boutonniere or a corsage is the greenery. Um, great in an arrangement, a ceremony arrangement. I use these a lot in arc arrangements, especially if it's going along the top of the arc or it's um, trailing in any part of it. And they're fantastic for table runners. And these are this type of greenery is what I highly recommend, just like podocarpus, because the way it's like it naturally is structured, you don't really have to tie it together. So if you've watched our other videos um, on making a greenery garland, you know that the tying is the most time consuming part and it's the reason that I generally don't recommend doing your own garlands but if you could find a way to make your garland without tying it together and just laying the pieces on the table that's the best situation and for that type of a look you want greenery that naturally has an arc to it and it's kind of tidy on its own it's not going to kind of go everywhere so um, I only have like seven stems here because I'm working from a bunch that I've already used some of it but uh, it'll it'll give you guys the idea so just like with the podocarpus runner it's really really easy you're going to start laying it on the table and overlapping the ends like this. And you can, like if you have a lot of long kind of naked stem, you can trim this shorter because sometimes you don't want that poking out of the, the garland. So I'm just gonna do that really quickly there. Uh, I'm not gonna do it to all the pieces, but you can, you can gauge it based on how it's coming together, but you overlap like this. So you're never leaving like any part of the stem kind of exposed and you start overlapping. So we're at three stems so far, that's four, that's five, and we'll do the sixth one kind of facing the other way, which you remember from the podocarpus video, we like to hide the, the stem at the end so it's covered. We don't just want a single naked stem poking out. So that's great, it's done. That was six stems. This is a five foot table because the question I always get asked is how much do I need to order? And um, that hopefully will give you a guideline, but always remember it depends on the look you like. For some of you, this is fantastic. For some of you, this is too thin. You want something very luxe and very thick, in which case, you just overlap them more. So you get that kind of flexibility with a look like this, but you have to take that into account when you're, make, when you're doing your planning. So those six stems got maybe four feet if we kind of scrunched them together and you made it more thick. So more dense, much more uh, rich looking, but it takes more greenery to achieve a look like that. And I would cover this stem or I just trim it. Actually, let's do that now. So we don't need that poking out. Okay, so you get an idea of how to put the garland together. The next step that we didn't cover in the podocarpus video, but we're gonna do it here, is how to add flowers. So the thing about adding flowers to a garland like this is a great way to punch it up. It looks beautiful, it looks natural, but the challenge with it, especially if you're looking to DIY, is keeping the flowers fresh. So the easiest way to do this is to just cut the stems short just to cut them into little heads and tuck it into the garland. Look at how beautiful that looks. By the way, this rose is a um, hot pink variety and I always say this about every single one, but it's one of my favorites. It's called Pink Floyd and it really is one of my all time favorites for a standard rose. Um, it opens really big, it's gorgeous. If you're looking for hot pink and you're able to get your hands on this, you're not gonna be disappointed. It's consistently beautiful like this. But back to the flowers. Um, 
The fastest way is to just do what I did, cut the uh, stem shorter and tuck it into the greenery. But you know if you've worked with flowers that without a water source, they will wilt. Um, you can do this shortly before the reception and they'll be fine throughout the night, but you would not want to do this the night before because I know a lot of people when they DIY, they set up their venue the night before. So that's something that has to be done closer to the start time of your reception, which is one of the advantages of hiring a florist is that they can come at a more convenient time for that. But if you're looking to do this yourself, you're just going to have to be organized. Organized. So you may have to have as much set up the night before as possible, but have a, uh, a crew of people that know what they're doing coming in shortly before the reception starts to add to, to add the finishing touches. Um, again, without a water source, they will wilt. So good choices, flower choices for this. Uh, number one would be roses. Roses tend to last longer outside of water than most other flowers. Um, if you did hydrangeas, I think hydrangeas are fine. I think maybe in that case, I add a water tube just because they are very, very thirsty. I have a flower that we haven't used yet. It's a day Dahlia. So um, I find if people love garden roses and peonies, they tend to love dahlias. And it's usually because they have such a full uh, profile, very lush, very beautiful. Dahlias are a lot like hydrangeas. They also wilt really, really fast. So I wouldn't recommend this for this unless you had an air conditioned venue, unless you're able to put them out shortly before the reception starts. But other than that, they are a really nice choice and you would do the same thing. You just cut it short. And um, you'll notice actually, because we haven't used this before, we haven't really talked about it, but dahlias are unique because unlike a rose, which has the, the flower faces up, dahlias 99% of the time face one way. They don't face upward. So that actually makes them a challenge to work with in an arrangement. But in a situation like this, it's not so bad. We just tuck it in so it's facing the top. Um, I also wired a rose. You can do this as well because sometimes the stems, if you have a very, really wispy garland, you're gonna have like uh, the stems of the roses visible. It's your choice. Some people are okay with that. Some people like a more elegant look. Wiring the rose does make it more elegant. It makes the stem easier to hide. You can tuck that in. Of course, I'd probably do it the other direction. Um, facing away from you guys so it alternates. Uh, the challenge with that of course is the time, right? So you're always trying to balance whether you're professional or DIY, the time with the final result. So that's a fantastic look. If you're not able to do this, if you can only set up the night before or the morning of and your reception doesn't start till 6 p.m., the other option you have is to, um, instead of tucking it into the garland, is having very, very short bud vases with water and just placing them close to the garland like that. So you don't get them quite on the table, but you get a very similar effect and that's an excellent compromise. So my tip when you DIY is you might find an inspiration that looks beautiful, but you always have to consider what your own situation is because you want everything to come out as close to perfect as possible. Sometimes you have to compromise and adjust the design a little, but it's worth it for the peace of mind. So um, I think I covered it all. So we're gonna do another video right after this. It's gonna show you how to make an arc piece that goes on um, any sort of an arch and uh, using very similar flowers and greens. Um, and I think you guys are gonna get a lot out of it. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Um, I guess I will see you very soon. Thanks.